Hello and welcome to the 15th episode of Italian Politician of the Week. There is a reason why I tell you the number of the episode each and every single time. It is because I personally feel like each one is worth celebrating. I would have never imagined to get this far, so thank you for your support. Usually in the series I talk about politicians who are problematic, eccentric, weird, oddly popular or simply crazy, but today I want to talk about someone I really admire and I honestly believe she will be remembered fondly in history. Without further ado, let's talk about... Oh, this looks important. Yeah? I forbid you to talk about that bitch. She spit on what it truly means being an Italian citizen, and she would sell our nation to the highest bidder. Benito, my decision is final. Please do not call me when I'm in the middle of recording. So, as I was saying, um, without further ado, oh for fuck's sake, what? I, Benic, I apologize for Benito's manners, but I urge to reconsider this. The woman in question and her mission to expand social and civil rights in Italy has also contributed to the increases of economic inequality. Furthermore, Carl, shut the fuck up. I made up my decision. Alright, today we're talking about Emma Bonino, former Minister of Foreign Affairs, Member of Parliament since 1976, former head of the Radical Liberal Party and current head of Pew Europa, which is basically just as libertarian as the previous party, except with a spin involving European federalism. Now, without further ado... Sinem, did you seriously put an ad before I could even start? Hey, an ad space is an ad space. Bonino was born in 1948 in a small town near Cuneo called Bra. <laughs> Bra. She graduated in 1972 with a degree in language and literature and joined the Radical Party in 1975. She has devoted her career to the protection of social and civil rights, as well as fighting against authoritarianism and corruption. If women today can divorce their husbands, have access to abortion operations and old positions of power in Italy, it is due to the social movement she was part of. Today she's fighting for the legalization of euthanasia in Italy as well as the legalization of marijuana and other drugs, although to a lesser extent. Her campaigns are not only aimed to improve social rights in Italy but also abroad. In fact in 1987 she traveled to Poland to join the protests against the communist dictator that ruled the country at the time. In 1990 she was even arrested in New York for distributing free syringes to people in need that would otherwise have to pay for them. She has also done numerous uh, peace missions in the Balkans, Africa and the Middle East for the United Nations and other international organizations. Her experience abroad as a diplomat and volunteer paid off when she eventually was nominated Minister of Foreign Affairs in 2013. She did a great job in representing Letta's government abroad during that short year she was in the ministry. Due to her tenacious personality and long list of people she helped. Even Pope Francis called her one of the best people to be alive in Italy today. Now before I say anything else, I have to state two things. First of all, just because I think she's awesome, it does not mean I agree with everything she says. For example, she thinks Israel should join the European Union, which is just insane. Secondly, I haven't talked about her political compass yet. Let's fix that. Back in the day, her political compass would probably be something like this. However, today it is actually here. The reason why is actually very interesting. Her ideas and activism had such impact in the country that it was not her that changed her mind, but the world around her changed instead. So as you can imagine, she is a centrist libertarian. That means she is uh, as libertarian on the left as with the right. She thinks many state-managed businesses and branches should be handled by private entities instead of public state ones. She also wants the market to be very free with as few restrictions and regulations as possible. But she is also a strong supporter of environmentally friendly policies. She is a globalist in most aspects, including the good and the bad ones. Personally, I really like her for the contributions she has made to widen civil and social liberties. Although I disagree with her on how much globalized 
we should be. She seems a very interesting person. She never married nor had children, though she adopted two girls from families in need when she was an activist in the 70s. It was not something permanent. It lasted just a few years, but it turned out a very formative experience that contributed to her formative years. She adopted them when they were infants, but they keep in touch to this day. Due to her old age, she has not been as active as she used to be, but also because she was diagnosed with lung cancer in 2015. And since then, she has lost her hair. In order to compensate, she wears an African turban that she learned to wear from the people she helped in Africa. People my age today know her as the old lady that appears in Pure Europa promotional videos. I will show you some of them. There are also a few where she speaks English, which, as you can imagine, is pretty good. È un semino di cannabis. Io ho deciso di piantarlo eh, partecipando alla campagna Io Coltivo per, peraltro, i consumatori di cannabis eh, in Italia sono qualche milione. Ecco, speriamo che nasca, che gli mettiamo dopo un po' d'acqua e poi vi aggiorno. E finché rimane proibita aiuta solo le mafie, hm? eh, di tutta evidenza. Ora, io ho mai fumato uno spinello in vita mia, ma semplicemente perché non mi piace. Però questo non vuole dire che altri non la debbano fare, se non fai male ad altri, eh, effettivamente. La politica, quando non sapeva giustificare alcune scelte, magari dolorose, ha sempre detto ce lo impone l'Europa, dipingendola pian piano come una matrigna avida e anche cattiva. Oggi invece dobbiamo tornare a ricordarci e a dirci che cosa l'Europa ha fatto di buono per noi, per il nostro paese. Dove altri vogliono farvi credere che ci sia bisogno di meno Europa, noi siamo convinti che ce ne serva di più. Intanto più Europa significa pace. Noi non ci possiamo dimenticare che proprio questa unione ci ha permesso di vivere oltre 70 anni di pace di seguito e continuativa il periodo più lungo che la storia del vecchio continente ricordi. Okay. You say that the progress uh, in the EU uh, is taken for granted, but Italy, a lot of the criticism of the EU uh, is on subjects such as austerity and migration, which many people in Italy think is justified, given, of course, that uh, Italy perceives itself to have been abandoned on the migration question by Brussels. Many of its citizens feel they're being punished because of, of austerity uh, provoked by their politicians. Is that criticism not justified? Uh, yeah, but I, I don't understand why they put the blame on Europe. On immigration, immigration, integration, uh, is not a power that states have given to the European Commission. They have taken and kept uh, uh, this uh, uh, subject for themselves. So they should blame themselves, not blaming something, the European Commission or Europe, uh, because it, that couldn't make it. The same for Italy. Take Italy. We don't have growth. Uh, but that is not because of austerity. It's because we have a, an enormous public debt, uh, which has an enormous cost out of sheer interest, 65 billion just this year to pay the interest of our public debt. Europe has nothing to do with that. You, we have done this, uh, made this public debt in the past 20 years out of our own. So don't put the blame where doesn't have to be put. Put the blame on the Commission on uh, something else, I don't know what, but put the blame on national government where it really stands. Socially and economically and politically, uh, do you get the impression that Italy is going backwards on some of the issues that you've been fighting for uh, throughout your career, be they abortion rights or human rights or migration rights? Yes. On civil rights, uh, there is a risk, a real danger that we go backward. And I think that now, finally, uh, there is a sort of wake-up call, because on civil rights and other issues, we are really in the danger of going backward. 
Well, I hope she did a better job than me in telling you where she stands. Thank you so much for watching. I'm sorry if she was not as scandalous as other politicians we have covered in the past, but I wanted to give her some space in the series too. Furthermore, there are a few eccentric individuals in her party that I just could not talk about before telling you who Bonino was. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.